Hi guys, it's Vin with Boris Effects, and in this tutorial we're going to be creating these cinematic titles using the brand new Corner Pin Studio in Continuum 2020. Okay, so I know what you're thinking. Vin, why would you use Corner Pin to create title effects? And you're right, Corner Pin is typically used for screen inserts, billboard replacements, and other similar effects. But here's the thing. As an artist, I like to think outside the box, and Continuum 2020 gives me the tools to do just that. And the great thing about using Corner Pin Studio to create these titles is I can do some fairly advanced compositing work regardless of my host. So as I'll show you how to create these titles, I'm going to be working in Media Composer, Vegas, and After Effects. I've also included host-specific time codes in the description if you want to jump to your host of choice, but I do encourage you to follow along to learn various workflow tips and tricks that will help you recreate these titles in any host. Okay, to begin with, let's look at how using Corner Pin Studio with built-in Mocha motion tracking can make even the simplest titles stand out. Here I am in Media Composer, and I have my footage of a young woman walking in the desert. I wanted to start with Media Composer because as a host, it presents its own unique workflow challenges. Now the first thing I want to do is create a new title with the titler. Let's call it Continuum Titles. And I want to go in and make adjustments to my tracking, font size, position, all the basics. Now if you're curious, the font I'm using for these titles is called BN Elements. It's available as a free download from Defont if you'd like to add it to your collection. Okay, so now that I have my title saved, I'm going to go and drag that right onto my V2 layer and trim it. And ordinarily that would be just fine. It's simple, it looks nice, but let's go to the Match Move category and apply Corner Pin Studio directly onto the text. Now anytime you're working with effects in Avid, you want to make sure that you're preserving Alpha. So I'm going to go and click Apply to Title Mat to keep my Alpha. Next, I want to select my workflow. Since I'm essentially inserting my text into the scene, I want to keep Apply to Foreground selected. This is going to apply my foreground clip, the text, to the background. For now, I'm also going to disable Comp over Background because we aren't going to need any compositing options for the time being. Now it's very important that when working with Corner Pin Studio that you select the correct background. Not only because we obviously need to composite our text on the background, but because we need to tell Mocha which layer it's going to track. If, for example, when I select my filter layer, when I go to launch Mocha, I'm going to get nothing. It can't find the background image that I want to use. However, if I specify that my background is first below, now Mocha can find my background and when I relaunch, I'm going to be able to track that quite easily. And when it comes to tracking in Corner Pin Studio, Mocha's UI has two trackers present. The first is the search area, which tells Mocha which area we will be tracking. And the second is Corner Pin, which specifies where each of the four Corner Pins will be positioned. Now this is an important distinction, because typically we don't want to track the exact same area as our insert. What do I mean by this? Well, Mocha is a planar tracker, which means that it tracks all of the pixels in a specific plane. So let's say that I want my text to sit on the ground here. The first thing I would do is set up my search area here on the ground. Now this is going to tell Mocha the motion of the pixels within this plane. But if I set my corner pins to that area, what's going to happen? Well this point represents the top left, top right, bottom right, bottom left of my corner pin. If I turn on Mocha's grid, I can see that if my corner pin matches my track, my text is going to lie flat on the ground, which is certainly a cool option, but not what I want to do at the moment. So to make sure that my text is positioned correctly in relation to the camera, I'm going to move my pins up here to the mountain range. Now don't worry about the text position along the ground for now. We just want to make sure it's correctly oriented. With that set, I'll hit track and let Mocha do its thing. Once it's tracked, I'll hit apply and there you go. I'm going to briefly turn on show motion path so you can see that our text is motion tracked to our clip. The next thing we want to do is make sure that it's positioned correctly. To do that, I'm going to open up the translation subgroup. Now this is going to allow me to adjust the X, Y, Z positions as well as the scale and rotation. Let's move the CTI to the last frame. Now I do this because I want to set up where the text will end up when my effect is finished. I'm going to adjust my scale and the X, Y position until I get something I like. If I play that back, my title keeps the translated position and scale along with the motion tracking which creates a very cool effect of the text being a physical part of my scene. Let's enable Drop Shadow and tweak the distance and softness just a bit. 
Now, there are a few other options you can play around with. You can add motion blur, color correction, even a light wrap. For this, though, I'm going to finish it off with two very simple filters. First, I'm going to add brightness and contrast to my background clip and just edge up that contrast a bit. Then I'm going to add a new video track and drop a colorized glow from the stylized unit onto that empty track. Then I'm going to go and change the colorized preset to black and white. And finally, just play around a bit with the blur and intensity to get something really nice. When I play it back, there you go. A slick, modern, fully motion track title effect in Media Composer created quickly and easily. Now Vegas users will be able to quickly create the same type of effect with only a few minor adjustments to their workflow. To illustrate that, I'm going to show you how to create this more advanced effect. Now it's the same basic workflow, but we're going to add in a few new Continuum 2020 effects. So here I am in Vegas Pro 17, and I have my rock climber footage. I've also created two empty video tracks, which we'll get to in just a moment. In addition, I also created a piece of Vegas text to use as my title. It can say whatever you like, but I went with Continuum Films, and again, I'm using BN Elements as my font. Now to composite this, as before, I'm going to place my text on V2, and then I'm going to want to apply Corner Pin Studio to the text. But here's where Vegas's workflow is unique. I don't want to use the standard video FX version of Corner Pin Studio. If I were to just drop that on my text, I'm not going to be able to access background layers or source layers for Mocha. So what I'll do is apply Corner Pin Studio in composite mode. This will allow me to access that all-important background layer. To select my background, I'm going to choose Source B, and then head down to the Mocha Motion Tracker. Now there's one very important thing to be aware of when motion tracking in Vegas. Because of the way Vegas handles composite modes, Mocha is going to have access to the entire timeline rather than just the clip itself. So if your timeline is longer than your clip, you'll get a lot of nothing. Now this won't be a problem for the effect or playback, but it's probably a case where you want to keep an eye on your tracking rather than hitting track and then wandering off to pet the dog. At any rate, tracking in Vegas is identical to what we did in Media Composer. In this instance, I want my titles to appear in the clouds hanging overhead. To do this, I want to motion track the movement of these clouds here. There's camera motion, and your first impulse may be to track something like the rock face, but the perspective difference would give us a very bad track, so the clouds are going to be the way to go. Now I'm going to set my corner pins up here in the sky near my track point and track forward. Now don't worry if your track goes a little bit haywire and Vegas switches to nothing. This is beyond the clip, so we're never going to see it. Simply stop tracking at this point. Hit apply, and there you go. Text floating in the clouds. Now as we did before, let's adjust rotation, scale, and position with our translation controls. Previously, we moved to the last frame to have the text revealed. In this case, let's have the text move out of frame as it rotates. And there you go. Oh, we're going to also be adding some additional effects, so let's enable drop shadow just like we did before, just to separate our text from our background. Okay, let's finish this off with some fun effects and a bit of color grading. As before, I'm going to add brightness and contrast to the background clip. Let's nudge up the brightness a bit and increase that contrast. Next, I want to add BCC Curl to the background. Now, BCC Curl is a new warp effect in Continuum 2020 that creates auto-animated distortions in the source clip. It's really cool and makes it very easy to create things from heat haze to water droplets to fantasy distortions. Here, we're going to increase the amplitude to around 30 and the size to around 76. This is going to create large wavy ripples that curl around the edges of the rock. They move pretty fast, so let's bring that speed down to almost zero. When I play that back, we get these large ripples that can create this liquid heat effect in the image. Because we put it on the background layer, it doesn't affect the text itself, but it does affect our rock climber, and I don't want that. So to fix that, we're going to go back to our old friend Mocha by selecting Mocha Pixel Chooser inside of BCC Curl. This time around, we're not tracking motion for our corner pin, rather we're creating a mask and tracking the movement of our climber. Now rather than individually create points, I'm just going to go and select the area brush and start to color in my climber. I'll want to hold the button down and color in the whole area, leaving no spaces, otherwise our mask won't cover the whole person. When satisfied, I'll click the arrow to create a mask, and voila! A quick and easy mask. Now here's the thing. 
After I hit track, Mocha is going to track the movement of the scene, but the rock climber is also moving, so my mask is going to drift a bit. This isn't a problem since I can always stop the track, select some of the points, and manually tweak their positions. It doesn't have to be exact, but it's good to try and get it as close as possible. When done, hit apply, and the curl is only applied to my climber, which is the exact opposite of what I wanted. To fix that, I'm going to go and open up my mocha mask and select invert. This will flip the mask and apply the effect to everything except for the rock climber. Then I can tweak the feathering to smooth out the edges, and if I play it back now, the world around her seems to ripple, which is very cool. Okay, let's finish this effect off with a bit of style. I'm going to apply our friend Colorize Glow to an empty track, and then in the VFX panel, swap the effect and composite, which will apply the effect to the whole image. Now let's change that gradient to yellows and push up the intensity just a bit. That looks good, but let's blend that back a bit by dropping the mix with original to about a quarter. This is going to blend the effect with the original source image. Lastly, let's create an empty event and drop that onto the track. Let's go to our Lights category and drop Lens Flare 3D. Next, I can launch the FX browser and choose from a selection of presets. You can pick any one that you want, but I think I'm going to go with Bright Pop DD. I like the flare itself, but more importantly, I like these hollows that you see right here. Now let's move our CTI to frame 1 and then open up the built-in light position controls. I'm going to set a keyframe and then position my flare in the top left. Now, if I use Vegas' picker, I'm only going to be able to move it so far into the corner. But, if I use the on-screen widget here, I can drag it a bit further out of frame for a better look. Last, let's move to the final frame and set a new keyframe, moving the flare about halfway down the scene. And when I play that back, that looks fantastic. Now, I think the most important thing to take away here is that Corner Pin Studio can make quick work out of motion tracking and compositing titles in hosts that typically aren't dedicated compositors like After Effects. But what about After Effects? Now, as a host, it already has a number of powerful compositing features that we can use in conjunction with Continuum 2020 to create some really stunning titles. Take, for example, this ocean title effect. Now, this is actually one of the easier effects to pull off with Continuum and After Effects. To begin with, I have my clip of the ocean, and I've created a new AE text layer. Same as before, I'm going to drag Corner Pin Studio directly onto my text and set my ocean background layer. As before, I'll launch Mocha's Motion Tracker. Now this specific clip presents a slightly unique challenge. There's a lot of movement and perspective change, so it can be hard to get a really good track. In this instance, what I did was set my search area here in the mountains, and my corner pin will be down here in the water. It's not an exact perspective match, but it's close enough to sell the effect that we're going for. Once Mocha is done tracking, I'm going to hit Apply, and then head over to the Translation group to scale, rotate, and position that text. When satisfied, let's add our drop shadow. You'll notice that I add that a lot. It's a good effect to help keep my titles from disappearing into the background, but don't go crazy with it. I usually set my distance and softness to low values. I want to create definition, but not this weird black shadow around everything. Now what I want to do is go up here and enable Light Wrap. This is going to wrap a reflection of the background along the edges of my text. I'll select my background layer and just nudge that width up a bit. This will soften the edges and reflect a bit of the luma from the background. Next, let's add our old friend BCC Curl to our text effect. Water is rippling above it, so let's create some distortions. I want to make sure that I position Curl above Corner Pin Studio in my stack, otherwise Corner Pin is simply going to ignore it. Now these waves are pretty dynamic, so let's increase my complexity to around 500. This is going to create far more diverse distortions than what we've previously seen. I'm going to set my amplitude and the size of my distortions to around 12. Unlike the rock climber, what this is going to do is create smaller distortions to match the wave motions. Speaking of which, I'm going to set the direction to 180 so that the effect auto-animates towards the shore. Then I'm going to nudge the spread to 30 just to spread each of those distortions out a little bit. And finally, I'm going to set my speed to around 10. Now I gave you some values there, but they're just roughly there to match the movement of the waves, so feel free to experiment, change the size, change the complexity and the amplitude of the distortions to create something quite unique. To finish this effect off, I'm going to drop brightness and contrast right onto my background clip, really crank that contrast up here, 
and maybe even tweak the brightness a bit. There isn't much else that really needs to be done, but what I can do in After Effects to make this even cooler is I'm going to change my text layer's track mat to multiply. This allows it to blend in nicely. And there you go. That's all there is to it. Continuum 2020 offers you powerful tools to create amazing effects and titles, as artists finding creative ways to use those tools can help us create unique and interesting effects. While Corner Pin Studio may typically be used for screen replacements and signs and other replacement effects, it's a powerful tool set that can be used to simplify your workflow to create some stunning, professional, and cinematic titles in any host. I'm Vin Morreale, and for more great tutorials, don't forget to check out the Boris FX website. Take care.